Hey, welcome back, I'm TJ. Today we're talking about the CM1620 from ISDT. Why they call it the CM? Because it's a charging module. Now, that says a lot right there, charging module. It's made to charge. It does its job well, but it's a charger. It's not gonna discharge batteries, not gonna store its charge. It has a very specific job. And while it looks weird, this is a charger. So it's designed for what they're calling a charging farm things like that, pretty much meaning it has screw holes on the side. You can take these, you can set them in a rack, you can plug them all together, and then have it set up to be able to go through and have a bunch of these to charge a bunch of batteries. So if you're looking at these, you may be asking, where's the screen? How do I control it? There's no buttons other than the link button to hook it up to Bluetooth. And there's a little tiny screen back here on the back. And the screen will tell you if it's charging or if the charging is done or, you know, how, how it's connected, whether it's Bluetooth or a PC or with the controller, things like that. But with what most of us are used to, there's no real buttons. There's no screen to actually go through the settings. Different people might have different features that they like. The, the Bluetooth app has a lot of settings that the controller doesn't. The controller for me is nicer to use when it comes to actually charging the batteries. But yeah, it's gonna be down to personal preference. So it's not a typical push button with a screen on it. However, when it's set up in a rack and you have a charging farm set up, these other options are gonna be much better to use. Another really cool feature of it is, so this is, it's a thousand watt charger which is cool. It does up to 16 S batteries. So two to 16 S batteries. However, 20 amps. So huge voltage, decent amperage. But if we want to go higher, you can do the ISDT parallel synchronous charging that they have with up to three of these units. And if you do that, it'll actually take you all the way up to 50 amps. And I mean, now we're, now we're talking power. So that's pretty awesome but you do need three of them and you have to chain them together. So on the front here, it actually has kind of a cheat sheet. If we have this in a rack, chances are you're not gonna see the top of it. But you have a bunch of plugs on the front. The far left one is a micro USB, made to plug into your computer. You can do firmware updates like that, which by the way, when you get this, update your firmware. So I tried to hook up Bluetooth when I first got it. Couldn't do it. Like it, it was a struggle. I couldn't get my phone to connect. It wouldn't even go into Bluetooth mode. So there's a link button on the right side. If you push that, it'll go into Bluetooth pairing mode or so it should. It didn't do it when I got it out of the box. So I had to plug it into my computer. I updated the firmware. Once I updated the firmware, immediately when I push the link button, right into Bluetooth pairing mode. So update your firmware when you get it through the PC app. Works easy. I turned it on. I had to push update a few times to actually get it to start. But once it did, it was really simple to do. So you have two XT60 plugs on the front. You have your battery on the left, the power on the right, power meaning power supply, external battery, what have you. You have your Bluetooth link above the power XT60, and then you have three USB-C ports in the middle. You have the host, the EXT port, and the slave port. Just how it sounds, you daisy chain these together. So for instance, if we wanna do the parallel charging, you have to daisy chain them together. Not just with the power cords, but also with USB-C to USB-C. So you take it, you go from host to slave, host to slave on them, and then you plug in your controller or B app or use your PC, and then you can control it to charge one battery up to 50 amps by doing that. So our setup here, we have a 3S battery acting as our battery. We want to charge a random 4S battery here plugged in as our power supply. And the goal here is I just want to go through and kind of show what the controller has to offer. So I do know for a fact that this doesn't have everything as like the, the app does. So in the app, you can go in and actually do the calibrations on this, you know, for leveling out the cells and verifying it's 100% accurate. In the controller, there's not an option for that. Can they update it with firmware? I'm sure. But so far, you know, as expected, when we go in here, our normal menu system up and down, you can see inputs, outputs, temperatures, uh, and then you have all of your cell voltages here with your main voltage on your entire battery here. If you long press the center button, this takes us into system settings. In the controller, you have backlight, volume, language, theme, system info, and that's all for the main settings. Now we go into our task settings by quick pressing the center button. In task, you notice it's grayed out. 
This is a charger. Now, under chemistry, there's a lot listed. However, some are grayed out. They only will do the ones that are highlighted in blue, so the high voltage lithium, lipo, lifey batteries, and then the ultra high voltage uh, lithium batteries. But we have a 3S lipo. It automatically selected our cells, and then we just hit start. And then, as expected with all the other ISDT chargers, it starts charging. Now one question I've already had from a customer was once this gets done charging, they had a blue screen, it was beeping multiple times, it was still putting amperage in, although it had reached the actual final charging voltage. And the question was, what's going on? Why was it doing that? Well, these chargers now, a lot of them, even the newer ISDTs that I have, so for instance, I use a K2, it has what's called keep trickle. And what it does is when the battery is fully charged, it's actually gonna keep the battery fully charged. So while it's sitting there plugged into the charger, it's gonna have a blue screen, it's gonna beep twice every so often, just to let you know, hey, the charge process is complete, you can unplug your battery now, and it's just keeping the voltage at 100% while it's sitting there. So you can actually disable that in settings, obviously not within the controller here, but you know within the app, things like that, you can actually go in and turn that off if you don't want it but for me, I find it to be a very cool feature. And then on this screen here, just like the other ISDT chargers we're used to, you have your cell voltages here. You can go down, see internal resistances, and then just the normal you know, input, output power, things like that. If you are interested in the CM1620, they are in stock right now on buddyrc.com. Links in the description. While you're here, if you have not subscribed yet, click the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Let us know what we can do better, do different, or that you would like us to do in these types of videos, and we'll see if we can do it for you. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.